Hello, this video is all about the financial statement visual notes. They consist of three pages. The first one is an overview. The second one is all about the income statement. And the third one is all about the balance sheet. Let's get started with page one. This is the overview. So we're gonna start with three different accounting concepts. The first one is adequate disclosure. And this states that financial statements contain all info necessary to understand a business's financial condition. That means that accountants don't leave anything out. They give adequate disclosure. Next, we have going concern. And this means that financial statements are prepared with the expectation that a business will remain in operation indefinitely. So nobody starts a business thinking that they're going to fail. And so going concern just means that when somebody starts a business, they assume or hope that it will continue on. And once they no longer want to run it, they can pass it down to a family member or sell it for a profit. But going concern states just that, that it will remain in operation indefinitely. The third accounting concept is matching expenses with revenue. And this means that revenue earned and the expenses incurred to earn that revenue are reported in the same fiscal period. This goes back to what we were talking about with the worksheet in terms of adjustments. So you wanna make sure that if you buy supplies, for example, in bulk, that you only count those supplies that you used in that amount of time. So for example, for a month, our example we used was toilet paper. So if you bought a huge amount of toilet paper, but you did not use all that toilet paper in the month, you only count the amount you used in that month as the expense. So again, that's matching expenses with revenue. Back up at the top here, we have the income statement, which reports financial info over a specific period of time. It indicates the financial progress over that time, meaning either net income or net loss. Did the business make or lose money at that time? Revenue then is money coming in, our revenue account has been sales in our example here. Expenses are the amounts a business pays to operate the business and earn revenue. So expense accounts, as we've talked about, are things like advertising and utilities and rent and all of those expenses needed to operate the business. The balance sheet then reports financial information on a specific date. This is not over a period of time. This is just like a snapshot. The financial condition of the business on this date refers to its financial strength. And businesses are considered strong if they have adequate available assets and few liabilities. So the balance sheet just has more or less the accounting equation and you check to make sure that assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And at the bottom here, where does this info for financial statements come from? The answer is the worksheet. And that's why accountants do that detailed worksheet is so they can organize their information and then report it in these nice, neat little financial statements that owners and managers and investors can use to make educated decisions. Moving on to page two, this is all about the income statement. The income statement has four sections. Those sections include the heading, revenue, expenses, net income or loss, and then a little bonus section is the component percentages. So first off, the heading includes the business name, the name of the document, which here is income statement, and then it includes the date, but it's for a whole fiscal period. So the way you write that is four month ended and then the date it ends on, or four quarter ended or four year ended. It just depends on what the business has determined their fiscal period to be, but you have to include that four blank ended and then the actual date that that length of time ends. For component percentages, you divide the amount of each component by the total amount of sales. And this allows us to compare apples to apples. It lets us make comparisons between what's gone on in the business over different periods of time, and it lets us compare our business to other businesses like ours. So we take total expenses divided by total sales, and we take net income divided by total sales, and the reason we do this is because decision makers need to know what component percentages are acceptable for a similar business. And like I said, we can compare to where our business was, for example, at the same time last year. Are we doing better? Are we doing worse? Are we doing the same? And then that allows decision makers to have detailed information and make the best decisions possible. 
Down at the bottom, we have our example. Up at the top, it is the X Ample business, the name of the business, then the income statement, which is the name of the document, and then four month ended April 30th. Then you'll see along the left-hand side, we have revenue that is a heading, and you'll see that as you move across, there is nothing else in that row. Then underneath revenue, we indent and we have our revenue accounts listed. In this case, it's just one, it's sales. And then we move across and these are not debit and credit columns. I know it's hard to switch back and forth when you're so used to working with the general journal. But when you move across there, you'll see that's the total of sales is 800. And that's why it goes in the right-hand column. Then you'll see expenses. We have another heading there for expenses and there's nothing following that row across. And then underneath it, we list all of our expenses. So insurance, rent, supplies. And then what we do is we put those numbers in the left-hand column. And that just shows that we need to do some math. It's not the total. And then below the supplies expense, you'll see total expenses. And we follow that over and that 750, that is the total of the insurance rent and supplies expense. And because it's the total, we're putting it in the right-hand column there. So then we take our total revenue minus our total expenses. So in this case, it's 800 minus 750. And then we get a positive number that's $50. And we record that as net income. So you see over on the left, net income. And then you can check this number with the worksheet just to make sure that you didn't make any math errors or, or any um, recording errors. So you check that with the worksheet and it does match our worksheet. So we can move on from there. Now we go to our component percentages, which is the furthest on the right there. Component percentages are all about percent of sales. So the sales or the revenue is always gonna be 100.0. And then what you do for total expenses is you take the 750 divided by 800, and that is 93.8. And you'll see that there in the right-hand column. And then our net income, we take that, the $50 divided by 800, and we get 6.2. Now, this is a situation where we have spent a huge amount on expenses. So what the business owners and managers would do is they would figure out how to decrease that percentage, meaning decrease their total expenses so that they could have a higher component percentage when it comes to net income. We have a few questions. How would it be different with two sources of income? Well, the answer is that with two sources of income, there would be a line for total revenue as there is with total expenses. So sometimes sales is not the only account falling under revenue. In that case, you would just add it up as you did with the expenses here. How would it be different with net loss instead of net income? Well, net loss is shown in parentheses to represent a negative number. Like for example, if these numbers were switched, you would see the $50 in parentheses if that were a loss. Lastly, we have page three. This is all about the balance sheet. Just as the income statement has four sections, the balance sheet does as well, starting with the heading, then assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And then the little bonus section here is on current capital. So the heading is very similar. You have the business name, and then you have the name of the document, which in this case is balance sheet. And in the balance sheet, you just use a single date. So none of that four month ended, four quarter ended, that is not the case with the balance sheet. Again, the balance sheet is just like a snapshot in time. It's just the financial health of the business on a specific date. And so that's why we just have one date here in the heading. Current capital takes into account net income or loss and owner drawing. So the way that you figure it out is you take the owner capital account balance, you add net income, you subtract owner drawing, and you get current capital. If you think about when we've talked about if the business is smiling or frowning in the past, you add anything where the business would be smiling and you subtract anything where the business would be frowning. So owner capital is a positive number plus net income because the business smiles when there's net income minus owner drawing because even though the owner might be happy about it, the business is not so happy about the owner taking money or other assets out for personal use. So it is a frown, so you're subtracting. On the other hand, for net loss, you would subtract both because again, if the business is frowning, you subtract. So you take owner capital minus net loss because the business would not be happy about that minus owner drawing and then you get current capital. And we'll see where that fits in here in a minute. 
So the balance sheet looks like this. And again, it is all about that accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Up at the top, you have the business name, X Ample Business. Then you have the name of the document, which is the balance sheet. And then you have a single date. In this case, it's April 30th. Along the left-hand side, you'll see that our heading this time is centered. So we have assets that is centered. And then below that, we have cash, our cash account balance. Then we have accounts receivable in that balance, then supplies and prepaid insurance and their balances. And then at the bottom, we have total assets, but we don't total it yet because we need to make sure they're going to be on the same line on the left as the right. So you do not total assets yet because you don't know where the total will land for liabilities and owner's equity on the other side. So hold off on that. Then on the right-hand side, we have liabilities. Again, that's centered. The heading is centered this time. Then we have our accounts payable vendor. It's $300. We have a total liabilities right there. Again, oftentimes there are more than one. So you would have the accounts payable accounts listed there, and then you would total them. And then we have owner's equity that is centered and we have the owner capital. Now this is the current capital. You have to do that calculation above that we talked about for adding net income, subtracting owner drawing. You need to do that calculation and put the current capital in this place. Then you add total liabilities and owner's equity. And what's important about this is you don't want to add the liabilities twice. So it's just the 300 once, 300 plus the 1,950. And you'll get total liabilities and owner's equity. And you want to make sure that you put total assets and the total liabilities and owner's equity on the same row. So sometimes it works out that these are not automatically on the same row. It, it works out where you would have maybe like a few extra assets. And in that case, you would skip lines over on the right side so that your totals are on the same line. And what we're looking for here is we're looking to make sure that our total assets equal our total liabilities and owner's equity, and they do. So that's good news. And at the bottom, how would it be different if owner's equity is reported in detail on the balance sheet? In this case, the current capital calculation is actually just shown on the balance sheet itself. And don't forget that totals are always on the same line, so you need to skip spaces as needed. There you go. At this point, you can go back and add color or details or extra notes in the margins. I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching.